In this video, we're gonna keep working on my bathroom and we're gonna do it right now. Now that the backer board's all set, I got one, two, three pieces of drywall to do and then we're gonna mud this up, mud and tape it. So let's get going. So you can see my drywall ended up even with this. Um, I did that on purpose. There's two ways you can do this. And I always used to add a couple studs. So it would come out to here and then you could wrap your drywall around and then do baseboard like this. Um, but since this is such a small bathroom, uh, I wanted to keep it back. Plus I think this is a nice uh, sleeker look and I'm gonna fill this in with mud wherever I need to and then I'll end up just caulking that in and uh, taking my baseboard and returning it to itself right here so it'll be a nice edge and I think that'll look nice so now I got to do these corners and on this one I'm gonna do a normal corner which is this stuff right here. It's called corner bead. And it basically goes like this. I already have my, my mark here. And I'm just gonna show you how to cut this stuff. Real easy, just some tin snips. And cut it there. Cut it there, Oops. and then you can take this piece, kind of wiggle it off, and then you line up your corner and put it on just like that. And to attach it, I use drywall nails. And one little tip, you don't want to really push on this. You want to have an edge that's higher than this. So you can fill that with mud so it covers this and any of your seams but you also want it to be even with whatever you put on this side Now on this side, what I'm going to use, you might think it's the same thing because it looks the same, but on this side, it looks like this. So what I'm going to do is fill that with the sealant and then press it into place and just nail it from this side and it'll be watertight on the other side. And that way I can still get my mud in between the two and make this a nice finished edge. I stopped it right here and then I can fill that down there. And then on this side, the tile will come up to the edge of this. Mudding and taping drywall is not that easy to teach. Uh, you basically just have to do it over and over again, but I can give you some tips. Uh, my biggest tip is probably that the more you put on the wall, the more you're going to have to sand. Meaning if you put it on real thick to make it look nice, you're going to have to sand it down and sanding is awful. I hate sanding. I usually, do lots of coats and do it real thin. And the first coat I do is with this stuff, <laughs> Durabon 90. Um, the reason I use this is because 
it dries really hard. And the thing about that is you can't sand it, but it's good for um, preventing cracking and it's just a really solid uh, first application. So when you put your tape on, you put this on and you have a much less chance of things cracking when, when stuff starts moving and temperatures start changing. And then after that, I've been using this stuff, USG with dust control, but also um, sometimes I use this and I call this blue top. There's green top of, by the same company that is just a little heavier and uh, a lot of professionals like to use that. I like to use this because it's much lighter and it, it goes on smoother. The only issue is that sometimes you get air bubbles, so you just gotta be careful and go slow with it. Um, so like I said, it's really hard to teach, but I, I'm gonna give you some tips and then I'm just gonna go to town mud this thing. So let's go. So before you even start your initial tape coat, you wanna go along Make sure the drywall doesn't have any imperfections in it. If you have stuff like this that happened during the install, um, you can just take a knife and cut it out. You don't want anything kind of protruding too much from the drywall because that will give you issues when you go to mud and tape. Things like uh, if you put a screw in and you missed a stud and uh, you have this paper sticking out. This isn't too much of an issue because it's in a corner, but still, if it wasn't, you're going to want to take a hammer. And just kind of tap it in and indent it so that when you put your mud over it, it'll be underneath the mud and you won't have paper sticking up past it. You want to go along and uh, right here you can see I missed the stud. Same thing, you tap that in. The screws, the ones that didn't go in all the way, you can either take them out or just smack them in like that. Same with this. Just like that. Now, as far as tape goes, this is very typical paper tape, which you can use on the seams but I only use it for the corners. I just fold it like this and roll it up in the corners. What I use on the flat seams is this mesh tape. And I like using the mesh tape because you can just, has it has like a sticky back to it that you can just stick on the wall. And then rip it off. And then you get mud right over that. So before I mix up any mud, I'm gonna do this on all the flat seams. Another tip for you is use a nice clean bucket because if you use one that has stuff in it, you're going to get a bunch of chunks in the mix and you don't want that. It's just going to cause you a bunch of headaches. So, dump your stuff in. Only pour in the amount that you think that you're going to need to, to use because this stuff kind of dries a little quick. This is a great tool if you're doing this. It's a mixing wand. If you don't use one of these and you try to mix it by hand, um, you might not mix it well enough and you'll get chunks and dry spots and it's just gonna be bad news. So highly recommend this if you're planning on using Durabon. Then you add water, mix it up. Okay. 
add a little water at a time. I don't want to mix this too loose. But you can always add more. All right, now that this is mixed, we're kind of on a, a time crunch because uh, it's going to start curing right away. So I like to get the stuff off the sides and then mix it in. Now, some people use what's called a hawk which is basically this big square uh, platform that you can put your mud on and just use your six inch taping knife. I like to use this, this is the 14 inch, and that way I can put my mud on here, have plenty of it, and grab it and do my thing. And then if I need to, I can use the 14 inch to smooth it out even more. Some people also use a bucket that holds a bunch of mud, um, but this is, you know, it's all preference. So whatever you want to do. So let's do some mudding. Trust me, you're going to get this all over yourself the first time you do this. So don't worry about it. So mudding a seam as simple as this is nice and easy. You take just a little bit of mud, like this, and fill it in. And your goal for the tape coat is to just cover the tape and leave no big edges anywhere on the drywall. Because like I said, you cannot sand this stuff. So that's it for a flat seam. Let's do a corner. So corners are a little trickier. So we're just gonna do a small section here. So you wanna take your mud, and if you have a gap, like I do, because my house is not square whatsoever, you wanna fill in that gap as much as you can with the mud, something like that, and then you want to make sure both sides you have some mud because you want that tape to stick to it. And then you take your tape and you make a seam like this. Stick it up there. Doesn't have to be perfect in the corner there because you're going to put another piece this way. Stick it up there like that. And then all of that extra mud behind the tape, you want to kind of squeeze out. And that's what's going to make the tape stick. A little air bubble there. There we go. Both sides. And that looks pretty good. Now, outside corners like this are really easy. You just want to take some of your mud and load it up. And basically what you're doing is you're using, you're using this as a guide to tell you whether this is even or not. So you just want to load that up. With your six inch knife first, especially if you're doing Durabon because you don't want anything to stick out. And then this is what I mean by being, being able to use my 14 inch. I can just swipe it up and that's good to go. Don't want to forget screw holes. Just take a little mud, wipe it nice and clean.
Hey, it's been about 24 hours. I didn't need to wait 24 hours, but just so happens I'm out of work and now I can uh, work on my bathroom. So this is kind of what it should look like. Got all the tape on there. This is called the tape coat. And then the next coats are first coat, second coat, third coat, uh, however many you do. And before you start the first coat, you wanna go along and scrape down any of these high spots, any of the little cuckas that you got there. That way they don't get caught up in the mud and make a mess. Um, and I wanna clarify, you could sand this stuff, but what ends up happening is this is harder than the paper and you sand it and then all of a sudden the paper starts coming off. So just a little clarification when I said you can't sand this stuff, but it is way better for um, preventing cracks and it's just very solid. And if you wanted to get this done really, really quick, they have uh, stuff that's not like this pre-mixed. It comes in a powder just like this stuff and there's like 90, 60, even 20, and I don't know, maybe even less than that. And that means it gives you 90 minutes of working time, 20 minutes of working time, whatever. And then it'll dry really quick or cure really quick. And then you can put another coat on and another coat on. You could probably get two or three coats in a day and then sand and be done. Um, but I just like this stuff and the way this is working out. Um, I'm just, you know, I have the nights to do this and um, I'll mud it, let it dry. Next night, I'll do another coat and another coat. So uh, like I said, mudding is really hard to teach. So basically on the, on the first coat, this is the tape coat. Remember on the first coat, you just wanna cover the tape and in places like this where it's kind of funky you might have to load it up a little bit more but you don't want to put too much on because remember the more you put on the more you have to sand so lots of coats lots of light coats so i'm just gonna go ahead do first second and third coat and uh scrape in between scrape all the high stuff and that's it i think it's time for a time lapse First coat is done. Spoiler alert, I am not the best at mudding, uh, but I can get the job done. So I'm gonna go around and scrape down all this high stuff very carefully. And you'll notice I only did one side of each corner. Some people do both sides and then they use a corner trowel to smooth it out. But I like to do one side at a time. Um, that's just a preference. You can do it the other way if you want. Um, but now on the second coat, I'll spread the mud a little further than this. And the idea is to kind of make a nice long taper for the mud to um, make it look like this wall is all one piece when you look down it. So I'm gonna clean my knives off, get some nice clean knives and do another coat.
Second coat, done. Time for third coat, but first, same thing. Scrape down the highs, these little streaks. And again, not the best mutter on the face of the earth. I'm no Paul Peck drywall tube, but go around and just scrape off any of these tuckers. And what I like to do on the third coat is on these flat seams, I'll just run a nice uh, light coat over everything. And then in the corners, since I put a nice coat over each side separately, I'm just gonna go along and um, look for any kind of imperfections that I might see and mud them up. And on stuff like this, I like to taper the edges. I'll just run some mud down like that. And yeah, I'll let that dry and it'll be time to sand. All right, third coat is done. And it just so happens that the electrician was available. So he hooked up the power and my awesome fan. I know I should have waited, but I'll lower it, sand it, and then paint everything. But that's all hooked up. Third coat is done and I'm ready to sand. The worst part about mudding. Um, it helps to have a big light like this, really bright light to shine so you can, and at this angle too, where you kind of want to point it across any of your seams so you can really see what you need to sand. I like using sanding sponges like this. This one's in rough shape, but basically all you want to do is smooth out the edges, take out all the big stuff like this. It doesn't take much. Lightly sand that, make a nice edge. You want it to look something like that. And you can just kind of put your hand over it and feel that it's smooth and you can shine a light this way and see all the imperfections and sand them out. And there's probably gonna be spots after you know I sand this and paint it, but then that's when you do touch-ups because I'm gonna prime the whole thing first before we put the wall color on. And then uh, we can do touch-ups after that. So let's get dirty, <laughs> let's sand away. All right, we're all sanded out and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I don't think there's gonna be many spots. This is kind of the, the finished product. Uh, the only seam I'm not happy with is this one here, which I might have to touch up, or I'm gonna have to touch up, but everything else looks great. So my plan now is I am gonna prime everything with ceiling paint, basically. But this is paint and primer in one. It's flat. Um, so basically everything's gonna be white for now. And I'll probably do two coats on the ceiling just because that'll be done. The ceiling will be done. And then do one coat on all the walls and uh, we'll be looking good here.
Well, one thing is for sure, it is a lot brighter in here. And you can really tell how nasty this tub is. Luckily, I'm getting somebody to refinish it. But we're all painted up, all primed anyways. Obviously you can see like the purple behind the white. Still, um, you know, needs wall color, but I did two coats on the ceiling. So the ceiling's all set, came out good. Um, but now we're gonna do touch-ups. Now it's not the easiest to find where you need to touch up. Um, so I recommend having a big, uh, maybe halogen light. Face it this way with the seams of the wall and wherever you mudded. Or if you feel like being a nerd like me, you can use a headlamp. So I'm gonna take some of my mud here. And because this drywall mud is white and the walls are white, what I'm gonna do is a little trick. And I'm gonna take some chalk that goes in a chalk line and I actually made a video on this before. I used red chalk before because that's what I had on hand, but using blue chalk, blue chalk is much easier to cover up after it's painted, um, whereas the red might bleed through a little bit. So I'm gonna carefully mix this up into my mud very carefully. Now I have a nice slightly tinted mud, so that way when you go to sand this stuff afterwards, you're able to see where the patch is. And if I do that, now when I patch that, you can start to see those bubbles being covered up. So I'm just gonna do that, go around the whole bathroom and do my touch-ups. Okay, so I was gonna wait to do the finished coat of paint, but um, you know, with the vanity not being here and I can get this toilet, uh, I can get paint on that toilet and not have to worry about it because I'm putting a new one in. Uh, the tub's not finished yet. So I might as well do the wall color right now. And this is what the wall color is going to be. It's like a grayish blue. Uh, it's on the lighter side. And my tile is going to be gray. So I didn't want to go too gray. So I got the blue tint in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint these walls. Paint is done. I did two coats of this. It's a nice color, I like it. I think it's gonna look good with the uh, light gray tiles and the white tub and the white door. It's gonna be more white than that. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, I like it. So that's where we're gonna wrap this one up. If you want to see more videos on this bathroom remodel, you can click hereish and hereish and check those videos out. And if this is your first time, definitely consider subscribing if you enjoyed the content. A little red button down there, and you can watch all my other videos. I got a ton of home repair videos and time lapses. You can go check them out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.